Hi, I'm Tommy from Carrera Casting. In today's best practices, we're featuring machine maintenance and getting the most out of your 3D printers. In today's episode, we'll be covering post-build inspection of your 3D printer. While we have this open, what I would like to go is right here. This is where the vacuum is attached. On these machines, on the 3Zs, if this is full of material or clogged, the sensor that this is attached to will tell the machine that your vacuum is full, but yet it isn't. So it's also good to check that this is not full of material and that, and that you don't see anything clogging it. If you feel you need to take it off, you twist it off. And you see, if you, you can get a close-up right here, we can see this is beginning to clog up. See, you get something like a paper clip or something, and you, let me just do it for you. Let me get a piece, come in, see, it was beginning to clog. Even though I didn't see it here, it's actually clogging in here. So we clean that, make sure it's all nice and clean. Do not puncture the tube. If you puncture the tube, it'll tell the machine that the vacuum is too weak, it will shut it off. Okay, once that's done, you twist back a little bit like this, and just with your hand, no tools, you put it back in here. Bingo, that's perfect, okay? Again, this is gonna be changed. This is good, a paper clip is good. Just make sure you do not puncture this tube. If you do puncture the tube, just change it. I wanna take a minute here to talk about the vacuum. The vacuums on these machines are extremely important because as your cutter goes forward and cuts, the material gets sucked in. So it pays for you to get a top of the line professional vacuum. Most of us in the industry, myself included, used to use brand names that use for households. The problem with that, the material in these machines will get past the bags and go into the motors and burn them out, causing either catastrophic failure of the, of the vacuum or worse, a fire. So it pays for you to get a brand name vacuum such as we have here. Now, though these vacuums are relatively a little bit more expensive than most, this is the Jetstream. You can get these from Solidscape themselves it pays because whereas a regular vacuum, you'll have to change the bag three to four times a week. This bag, we change anywhere between 30 to 90 days, depending on how much we're building. Also, it's insulated, so the sound is very much less than normally. And it's also uh, fireproofed on the inside, so if anything happens, this will shut down before it catches fire. I cannot stress enough how a very good vacuum will help your builds because the particulates from the cutter will not fall on your part and they will get sucked up, they will get sucked up into the vacuum instead of laying on top, let's go here, on top of your blade. What happens for me, this is a dirty blade and it should be because the build just stopped. For most people, they won't even clean this. That's a mistake. What happens is these particulars build up and they form and they dry and get hard. And what happens is as it goes through your part, and keep in mind, this is the only part of the machine that actually touches your build, it will rip it apart. So it's really good for you to clean it, also to have a good vacuum in order to pull the material back your way. And that way when this blade goes through, you have a nice clean cut for the next layer. You will notice how clean this is. And that is because of this vacuum. No other reason other than we do our daily cleaning. Now, we put this back. So in conclusion, we discussed checking the vacuum hose for clogging, using a professional vacuum with safety and high performance features, and properly cleaning the cutter blade after every build. Now we can go on and start our next build. Hope you enjoyed this segment and stay with us. There are more best practice videos in CAD and 3D printing for jewelry manufacturing to come.